Hi there, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make a pole lathe um, bed assembly with poppets. Um, in the future I may do a video on uh, doing a proper mandrel, a treadle, and then uh, maybe my setup of the spring pole. But uh, I've got a lot to learn, so let's start with the basics. So to start off this project, what I've done is milled a, uh, the bed of the lathe, and this is from uh, White Ash. So um, I've made it about three and a half inches thick. Uh, there wasn't too much thought into it other than three inches looked too thin and four inches uh, looked too big. So, um, so that's what I got as a bed. What I'm doing now is just hand planing uh, chainsaw marks from the chainsaw mill off. And then uh, what I'll do is create a nice shape. I'm not sure if I'm going to square it up uh, precisely or give it you know, a little bit of a funky shape to uh, the bed. So I'm just using a, a cheap Mastercraft uh, hand plane that's been sharpened and uh, just been uh, using this for um, a couple of years now and feel comfortable with it. And so uh, what I'm doing is somewhat trusting the uh, the milling and I'm just gonna take off the, um, the um, saw marks. So it's not about you know, getting your, your straight edge and like, oh my gosh, there's a gap here or there. Um, just making it as, uh, as flat as possible. Then we're going to lay out some joinery and, um, and go for there. So what I've done as far as hand planing this board goes is um, you should be able to see the grain here. So uh, it, the grain actually meets right about here and uh, hand planing it, it tears a lot right there. So, um, so some steps I've taken to hand plane this is starting going across the whole board uh, around here you kind of have to change direction so you'll be going from uh, this direction and um, and then so once I got rid of a lot of the chainsaw marks I started going with the grain as much as possible so on this side of the log I can bring the hand plane fairly straight and go in this direction and then coming towards me on that side so now that I've got uh, my surface clean I'd like to, uh, to kind of work with a square inside this uh, this table here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is just find a quick center. Uh, so I'm roughly 16. So I'm going to make a uh, I'll mark at eight. And eight again. And so I'm just going to lay out a, um, a square end which I can cut later. So what I'm going to do is just mark some lines here. Um, anytime you're, you're cutting out a section, it's a uh, Sometimes it can get complicated, and so it's just nice to have a, a nice visual to, um, you know, which which material is waste and which uh, is not. So what I need to lay out right here is uh, called a headstock or a poppet, the upright post with the pin. So uh, what I'm going to do is have a through wedged uh, mortise and tenon here, and so what I'm working with is uh, seven inches um, across, and then it's uh, six six lengthwise. So what I'm going to do is um, design a mortise and tenon here that will go all the way through and then I'm going to have a wedge that will uh, will lock it in place. But what I want also, um, instead of having a pole overhead to, uh, to give me tension, and so what I want is the possibility to have a bungee between two poles um, upright from the lathe. So, uh, so I want to have some room here. Uh, I don't want it too close. Um, in case I, uh, you know, there's some, I don't want a, any cracking going on. And then I want it a little bit away from the, um, the poppet here. So, uh, so I'm going to lay this out and explain my thoughts along the way. For the possibility of having this sapling right here, I'm going to give a three inch center. And uh, so I'll have a hole drilled um, right there. And then I'm going to start the headstock at six inches. So here's my layout of um, the mortise for the headstock or pop it as it's called. Uh, what I'm doing is um, basically working with these two beams I have underneath 
they're going to be the poppets. And so this is going to be a uh, mortise and it's going to receive a through wedge uh, tenon. And so I got um, seven inches across and, <clears throat> and six long. And so uh, the mortise is going to be three and a quarter. And that way you have uh, some shoulders to sit on. And uh, it's just going to provide plenty of support um, when the mortise, or sorry, the wedge is placed, uh, hammered through the tenon underneath. So, um, so yeah, as I mentioned, I'm working off this straight line, uh, which runs down the whole uh, table. And um, so most designs show that the, uh, the headstock is stationary. And then down here we have um, a very long mortise for the tailstock. And so um, my design was to, uh, to make this a little bit more compact. I don't need to do like chairs and stuff. So, um, so it, it might be on the, little, uh, on the smaller side as far as what I can work with. So, so from down here, um, once my tailstock is in at the very back of the, the bed here, um, it'll be, uh, I forget what I measured it, six, yeah, six, eight, and then I have 17 and a half roughly between the two pins. So, so that'll give me like, uh, if I want, I can make a small rolling pin. Um, but this is basically for bowls. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is very, uh, the table is very basic and, um, and so what I'm going to do is prepare these to be cut out now. So it's just the uh, the two mortises, and then um, I'm going to leave these uh, for now. Um, and so uh, I'll explain later what these are for. And um, yeah, and so then I'll uh, I'll get it ready to square up as well. So we'll move on to the next step, and I'll show you how I prepare and how uh, most timber framers prepare to uh, to cut out uh, joinery like this. So a timber framer's main tool is uh, basically their chainsaw nowadays, and um, and so it's uh, it's surprising how accurate you can be with a chainsaw, and so um, basically uh, you just be uh, efficient at removing material. So um, to remove this, uh, just plunging the chainsaw on this, you're going to have a lot of tear out, and there's not going to be any clean lines. But if you score the lines, then uh, then you'd be surprised at um, the accuracy of the chainsaw. So, so what I'm going to do is score a line that is uh, angled. Um, the knife edge will be angled in inwards uh, to the mortise a bit. Now, be careful not to cut my fingers off. Now, normally uh, you'd be using pine, and it cuts a lot easier than. Uh, and ash, so I'm used to having it just dig in and cut real nice. This is a little bit tougher. There, so all we've done is basically cut, um, scored about a sixteenth of an inch uh, into the material, and then um, so that'll prevent tear out, and we'll be left with a nice clean um, mortise here. So I'm going to do that with all the other cuts, uh, my end cuts, this uh, long. Uh, long mortise and um, yeah, and every uh, every chainsaw cut uh, till the end of the project. So I'm going to start cutting out this uh, center mortise. I actually made an adjustment. I'm going to uh, to just make it one mortise all the way down the uh, bed. Um, it's just going to be more work cleaning out the corners of the mortises, and uh, it'll allow me to put both um, poppets in the middle if I want, or on the other side. So it's just. Uh, maybe a little bit of unnecessary uh, work so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it with the chainsaw and um, yeah just uh, I'm just gonna go real careful uh, this will be the hardest part the uh, front of the the mortise here the thin part and um, yeah so uh, at the end it'll look nice but uh, we'll see I haven't cut out a mortise and ash yet Finishing off the end of my mortise right here, uh, what I'm doing is using a T-handle uh, um, auger, and so that'll be uh, the end cut. And uh, so the chainsaw was pretty dull, but um, 
what I probably, uh, you know, in retrospect, I could have uh, used a skill saw, got as deep as I could, and then um, gone from the other side and use a skill saw, and uh, that would have given me a lot cleaner cut here. I was borrowing a saw, and it was pretty dull. Uh, it was from an arborist friend, and um, yeah, so it, the cut was messy, and uh, so I'm gonna have to clean it up with the axe. But I got my pencil line. I tried to stay inside, went a little over on that one spot, but so after I'm done drilling out the uh, the ends of the mortise here, um, this should uh, this should pop through. And I'll clean up the inside and uh, clean up the ends, and uh, hopefully by today I'll get the. Uh, the bed um, all assembled. So now that the legs of my lathe are done, I've made this simple jig to uh, to get a nice even angle on um, on the bed. So I want the the legs to be you know look fairly uniform. So what I figured was 20 degrees gave a nice uh, angle for the leg. So all I've done is drilled a straight hole through this block, and then on the bandsaw, um, cut uh, you know this the 20 degree angle on it. So this is going to help me pilot uh, a nice accurate hole. notice is the, uh, the table is out of level so what I'm going to do is flip it upside down and then measure up from the ground and uh, cut off all the legs and so that'll give me a square level table and um, yeah so it'll also give me a chance to adjust the height which uh, I'm not exactly sure um, about yet so I, what I might do is uh, leave the height you know only take off a little bit of the legs and then once I start actually using the pole lathe I'll probably um, be able to judge better uh, the height I want. So what we're going to do now is flip the table over and then um, and then uh, make some measurements and cut off the legs. Like I said before, what I'm going to do is measure from the ground up and then I'm going to take um, measurements around the legs and uh, you know the same measurement and then when I flip it over it's going to sit level. <laughs> So this is the, uh, the headstock poppet, and uh, I'm just laying it on top of the, uh, the blank right now just to, to give you guys a visual of what, um, what we're looking for. So I'm going to cut the other one out on the band saw. I just wanted to, to cut this out and just see how it goes before filming it. But, um, but yeah, my band saw cut it nice and easy. And uh, yeah, so just to, uh, you know, I wanted a decent visual for you guys. So this is my tenon. It's going to go through uh, the mortise here. Then we're going to uh, cut out a hole or a nice square mortise here for a wedge. So what's important for, um, for milled timber is um, just kind of picturing a square, uh, a nice square piece of joinery inside, um, you know, an, an imperfect uh, log. So, so this is, uh, I know this cut is okay. This cut here, I was just, just standing on the log and, and cut, so it, it's off and it's bad. But uh, we got our center down here. And it, I know that this is uh, parallel to each other, and so when it's on the bed of the bandsaw, I know it's going to make an a, a 90 degree cut. So when I cut this out, I'm going to have something that goes in the mortise on the bed straight, and I want this pin, if I just drill it 90 degrees, I want it to point straight, I don't want it to be off. And I don't want the, uh, the poppet to be off either. So, um, so having a piece that uh, is uh, parallel top and bottom, uh, just using uh, the um, chainsaw mill is uh, is suffice for what we're doing here. Or if you buy a piece of timber, um, it's going to be in a lot better shape than uh, than the chainsaw mill. And um, so laying out the joinery is uh, is the main thing, and then just removing material. So I'm going to use a bandsaw, but all you you'd need to do um, with anything else, if you bought a, a piece of uh, timber. You can make some uh, skill saw cuts along here and uh, and then knock it out with a chisel and uh, that'll expose a lot of your tenon and then you can just clean that up with a chisel or an axe and uh, same thing on the other side. And then for cutting a big timber like this, I think my saw gets uh, two and three quarters um, depth. So what I do is cut, you know, uh, um, along my, uh, my end cut here and then flip it over and cut again and uh, if anything I just take the hand saw to it and finish it up quick and uh, it doesn't take much time so the most important thing is that the shoulders of this poppet sit flat 
and uh, you want it to be somewhat you know as square as you can get it so that uh, the pins are straight um, but yeah these shoulders want to you want to get them as accurate as possible so just always use your square with everything and um, and score your lines and then uh, once it's all cut out you shouldn't have any problems so let's go over to the bandsaw and cut that out So now that the poppets are done, we gotta fit in the, um, the wedge, and uh, so we gotta lay them out. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna start by marking a line underneath. And that'll give us something to work with. So as you saw, I just scored underneath, and um, what I actually wanna do is bring this line up a little bit, um, because uh, if the wedge goes in, and if this is too close to the bottom of the table, the wedge isn't actually going to do anything, so I'm going to bring it up. Um, let's just bring it up half an inch, just uh, so we always know we're okay in case anything shrinks. Okay, so now what we got to do is uh, figure out a size for our our wedge, and so I think I like the look of a two and a half inch wedge. So I'm just marking at uh, one and three quarters here, and then four and a quarter. I'm gonna go two and a half inches lower than this opening right here. So that's gonna give me an opening of two and a half by two and a half. And uh, so my wedge is going to be a little bit smaller. It's um, the main thing is that the pressure is going to go this way, if you can see there. So it's going to just hold this down tight to the bed, and that's all we care about. I don't really want it super snug on the sides because uh, if shrinking happens, um, or uh, or rain or whatever, <clears throat> I don't want this seizing up and locking up on me. And if I can't pull it apart, or if it's too tight and I just want it to always be easy, uh, you know, quick in and out with the wedge. Let's get to cutting this out. So because my mortises are two and a half by two and a half, I got a one and a quarter uh, Forstner bit. So I'm going to drill four holes and um, that'll leave me with uh, not much material to clean out. And then, um, so after that's cleaned out, um, I'm going to actually see how it works without angling the mortise. I'm going to just uh, use the wedge and um, yeah, and just see how that works. So now that I've drilled out uh, most of the material, I'm going to grab my mallet and chisel and clean out the rest of the joint. So for these pins, I just went to the local hardware store, um, found some rod, and, uh, and so I just took the angle grinder and shaved it into a, a four-sided point. And then um, you know, just gradually rounded it, and uh, I have a um, and I have a drum sander on my lathe, and so I just uh, shined it up a bit to, um, to just let uh, the mandrel and the the workpiece spin freely. So I've cut these at roughly three and a half, and I'd like two inches to stick out of the poppet. So I'm gonna have to um, just be careful with my drilling, and uh, yeah, we're almost there. I'm really excited here. I'm just going to secure this in place with my wooden mallet. So what I'm going to do to make sure that um, that everything's lined up here, I did measure, but I'm just going to slide this forward. So it's a little bit off, but that's okay. It's uh, good to just uh, double check everything. And um, yeah, let's get this one drilled. 